Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Put together a little challenge for myself. I've installed SolidWorks 2023 Service Pack 1. So I thought I'd have another look at the G3 constraint in Sketcher. So good challenge for that is this bubble letter challenge. I've borrowed this off someone else and I've modified it. So it's not the original letter, it's a different letter. But it's got an equal uh, sort of challenge, especially around this area here where everything branches together. I tried to use G3 constraints on all the splines where possible. And this is my end result, which isn't too bad. Pink for P, P for pink I mean. So if I turn my zebra stripes on, got a fairly good flow of going on. One of the biggest challenges was through here. So if I change the direction of my zebra stripes, um, getting a nice even sort of consistent flow through this um, tight radius on the inside. There were a few challenges that I couldn't quite get around with the boundary surface. So you can see it was all flying quite well there. Okay, so with my single light source reflection map on, everything's all right apart from in the boundary surface, the surface here, there is a slight, let's see if I can bring it up, slight wobble that I just couldn't get rid of in here and that's because this surface here is made and it references these one two three surfaces here and there's just something going on across here i tried breaking it and making this into three just couldn't get rid of it so i've got actually an optional version where i use the fill surface and that takes care of that problem except the fill su surface is a little bit touchy okay so let's roll to the top everything's pretty much named so it should be pretty obvious so I've got a bounding box, so we go to our front view, so that's just like the gross dimensions, and then I've got an outline, which has, which is on the center line, and that has um, all pretty much the main perimeter, and these are all set up as G3 connections, because they are all pretty much uh, matching to a line, I've just used collinear, so a degree 7 spline, and then made the um, the control polygon segments 1, 2, 3 on each end uh, collinear with the line to make that a G3 connection. So if we turn on the curvature graph and scale it down a bit. So the curvature is going from 0 at this point and then up and around the corner. And that's the same for all of these splines. This one down here is a little bit different because it loops right around. So again that is a degree 7 spline. And there's a the curvature, so curves a lot, slows down a bit in the middle, and then curves around and up, down to zero curvature. Okay, so I'll just exit this. Moving on, I've got a plane for thickness, which is four millimeters, four millimeters, four millimeters a side, so eight millimeters overall. Okay, now I'm going to start the main surface thing. So I've used a partial e ellipse, an elliptical form right the way through here. As the section gets skinnier, this, this point here is still touching the thickness. Okay, next thing I'm going to build the surface down here. So I've created a couple of planes. I'm going to create a section through the middle here. A centre line, again that's a degree, that is a degree 5 spline. So these CVs are lined up, three, one, two, three CVs collinear to this line here. So that's G3 there. And on this end, it's vertical, so that will be curved continuous when it mirrors across. And same with this section here. And then I've extruded this section here. And then mirrored that across the other side here. To use as the profile for the other side, because I don't want to build this in half and then mirror it, because I just have some discontinuity issues. Okay, so there's the main surface beside these. And then I'm going to trim this out to be a four-sided surface. So I've, I've done that with a sweep, as you can see there. And that sweep goes slightly past uh, this end point here, because there's a little bit of funny uh, curvature here, so I've just trimmed that off. And I've got a, a sketch here that takes that um, sweep past 0.5 millimeters. Okay, and then I've created a plane on the end to cap that sweep, and then trim that 
Then I've added a cross curve here. Again, G3 on each end. This is the first time in this model I've actually used the G3 connection um, constraint, which is on this end here because that's matching to an intersection curve, which is a curve. Whereas on this end it's a line because this is an extrude. So again, on this end I've just stacked those CVs up, one, two, three, and made them collinear to this line to get a G3 connection. And then boundary surface. It's a fairly smooth result on that end. And then I have mirrored that over to the other side. So that's the that's the foot finished. Knitted that together. And then it's time to move up to the top. So I've got a plane here. This is the first section of the, the loop. So again, this is a partial ellipse, half of an ellipse. And I've done the same here at the bottom. And then I've created a sketch with three lines at equal distance to set up two more planes to add two more sections. So two more planes, two more sections. Now I'm going to trim the top of this vertical off because I want to create this corner here. So I've trimmed that off. So now I've added the top corner middle sketch. Um, so just ignore the fact that these dimensions aren't nice round numbers because I've used Instance 3D to drag these around to tweak things. Uh, so I'm not too concerned that the numbers aren't nice and round. Okay, then I've created a cross section here and added another cross section here and then built the surface, boundary surface. And next I'm going to build the outside surface here. So that's all flowing quite nicely. And next up is the loop surface through those four sections I made. So that runs right round. Right, next up is to trim out this area here for the trickiest part of the model, which is a big blend that goes in here. So I've created, I figured out that I can't have um, everything blending together like being exactly the same height because that may need may require like a, a little triangular planar surface and I don't want to read anything as being planar in this so I've decided the trim has to come back further so some relief so it's not trim it's not I'm not going to build the surface from the center line because if I did that and it was G3 the curvature would have a big dip in it because it's, it's taking the curvature from this uh, elliptical surface, it will want to run downwards. So that's why I've got to add some relief here. So when I add um, anything that's curvature continuous from the surface, it wants to it will run out sort of fairly smoothly, horizontally. Okay, so the way I've set this up, this corner here can be reused here and also here. So that's just saved me a bit of time and it makes the model more consistent. So I want to trim a section off this surface here. So I've created a, a loft surface, as you can see here. And this is a variable loft using an arc. Um, and the reason I haven't used the full circle is because I've used a circle, you've got to control the start point of the circle and you can get some twisting going on. So I've used an arc like this, there's no twisting. And then again, I've used uh, the 3D, instant 3D, and I've dragged these, these uh, dimensions around a bit. Okay, so that loft trims, that's a variable distance trim back, rather than using a consistent sweep. And then I've mirrored the surface down to the bottom here. And I've created a sketch for some planes, to control some planes. And I've added some sections across here, because I want to create a four-sided surface in here. And in doing so, this sketch here, Um, I've played around with these numbers quite a bit because I ended up, I wanted this sketch here, let's go into that sketch. Okay. So that's got um, some curvature to it. It's actually slightly deviating upwards as it comes through this end because I want it to come up and over. So we get a sort of a, a rise in this area here. So that's why I was tweaking these numbers on this end, on this section here. 
So if you tweak the numbers on this section here, you watch the curvature plot here in the middle. So you can see what's happening there. And that's quite sensitive. This form is very sensitive to small changes. Okay, so then I've created a boundary surface in the middle there. And then I've trimmed, you can see there's a little bit of a wobble in here. So you can see there with the curvature. So I've created a trim plane, which is an offset. And then trimmed one, two, three surfaces back to give us a rectangle. I knitted everything together. And then I've got a curve in here called a crown section. So this section, it's quite subtle, but it's quite hard to show. But what it has is G3 on each end, and then it's a degree 8 spline, so I've got an extra CV in the middle. And that CV is free, it's floating, so I've added 0.05, so it's 0.05 above the endpoints of this sketch. Um, and that sketch is on the apex of this ellipse so that that means the surface that comes over here is going to rise slightly above my um, overall thickness plane because I don't want any concavity through here okay and I have a 3d sketch which is some points and in, in, um, in space on these edges which on this boundary surface here there are connectors so this is the main blend so I've got connectors one two three one two three one two three those points I've dragged around and they've clipped onto the um, onto those sketch points in that 3D sketch. So you can tweak them from outside of the um, the boundary surface if that makes sense. So if you edit these points here. So if I get this one here. See the curvature changing. On that surface not in a great way okay and then just knitted everything together and mirrored it over and solidified the model yeah so fairly smooth um, i'm happy enough with the output and i've i didn't really noticed the g3 constraints in this i don't know if they've changed something since 2021 when i tried using the g3 last time um, in a previous video and it was I was having a bit of a nightmare with it but they seem far more robust this time I don't know uh, not to my knowledge that they've done any work on the G3 constraint but it seemed much more robust like when you make all the segments um, equidistant or something equal length and then add the constraint there was um, there was no over definition or anything so yeah looking looking positive I'll just show you one thing that happened with my my full surface version Okay, so this is the fill surface version, which doesn't have that little wobble in it. But what it does have is some sensitivity to this loft for trim here. So if I change a dimension here, let's just drag it around until something happens. Tell you what, let's just go back to, we'll roll back here. So it's just half the model. It doesn't always happen. So let's just see what happens. Not going to happen this time. It's behaving itself. Oh, there we go. All right. So once it starts doing that, it can get quite bad. Yeah. So That's one reason I, if I can, I'll try and use boundary instead of fill, because sometimes weirdness happens like this, but um, normally you can tweak it out. See, now it's gone again. So, yeah. I'm not sure why that makes it want to do that. And now it's back to being nice and smooth. Like, really smooth. Anyway, um, I'll put this model online. So you can have a pick through it. Um, I'll put the this this version so it will have a configuration if you want to swap between the boundary or fill. 
it's just a simple um swap using some suppressed features at the end. Thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. See ya.